All right, everybody, we are live this Friday evening. Uh, search for Huru and have the brother T West with Afri Synergy on late tonight. Thank you so much for being patient and, and coming on this late uh, Friday evening, um, brother T West. Uh, you know, we're going to chop it up this evening in regards to Libya. I know I've done several videos on Libya, uh, but Brother T. West is the expert on Libya uh, during Gaddafi uh, and also, I guess, after Gaddafi was removed. Uh, so, Brother T. West, thank you so much for, for coming on uh, this late Friday night. Well, Brother Mir, thank you for the invite uh, to your program. Mm -hmm. and I look forward to really talking about and discussing with you and your listeners about the greatness of Libya pre-invasion. And then that was followed by hell and slavery. Right. And then in the end, I want to talk about solutions Okay. for Libya. Perfect. Hey, but brother, go ahead and tell people who you are. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually subscribed uh, to, your, to your platform, Afri Synergy. So go ahead and tell people who you are, your background, and uh, all that good stuff. Yes, uh, T West, mm -hmm. and T is an initial for for my name, of course. My name is Theotrus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a uh, mouthful, but that's why everyone calls me T T West. And I've been around for many many years, uh, either writing or presenting information uh, via video on uh, YouTube, even before there was a YouTube, all the way back in the day before there was an internet, I was out there on Prodigy. Now, some of you who are a little older, you would know what Prodigy is when I say Prodigy. But I was, I'm dated all the way back to at that time. I was going to say, we're not talking to rapper, but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're not talking to rapper. <laughs> uh, that was a platform uh, before the internet became available, and it was a dial-up platform, and you had thousands of people who interacted out there. But uh, Afro Synergy is a program that has been in place for many, many years, uh, over 12 years. It's been out there, and it presents information on geopolitical matters, on domestic matters here in the United States as it relates to black people. And as I said, geopolitical matters that relates to the African diaspora of people as well as people in Africa. And then also Afro Synergy deals with uh, current events that are happening in the world. So don't be uh, surprised if I do a program about North Korea, about China, about what's happening in Syria, and of course, Libya. Libya is a topic uh today so geopolitics that includes everything and oftentimes uh most of us as african americans we don't really uh understand geopolitics we're not into that but we don't realize how that affects us right here domestically in the united states of america so that is uh, a part of what i try to relate to uh, black people, not only just black people, but people in general, uh, relate to them so that they can understand how they can process this information and make things better for them in their own lives. So Afro Synergy is out on YouTube. Uh, as I said, it's been there for many, many years. And in 2011, I did several programs on the situation uh, leading up to NATO's decimation of Libya, and then after that decimation of Libya. Um, we'll get into this in the program, I'm sure, but most people, most Blacks, and most people in general, they think slavery just started in Libya. That slavery started as soon as NATO and various Arab countries started bombing Libya in 2011. It did not just begin. Okay. So uh, that's a little bit about Afro Synergy. Okay. Thank you. Let, let me ask you this. Sorry, sorry for, for buttoning. I just, I, I have a question in my head and I'll forget it. So, um, and I brought, this, I brought this up to you uh, before we got on. So um, once, I guess, and again, 
the, you're right. The slavery has been going on since uh, NATO bombed Libya and you know removed Gaddafi, and all of a sudden now people want to protest and speak out about it. Um, so in a, a group, they said that pretty much the slavery in Libya has always been going on even before NATO. Gaddafi was very aware about it to the point where somebody said that Gaddafi even had slaves or Gaddafi was complicit in the slave trade and that this has been going on even before um, uh, NATO got involved. Um, because, I, and, and to be honest with you, I think the reason why a lot of people did not bring up the whole slavery thing is because a lot of people who are now bringing it up were all Obama and Hillary Clinton supporters. But now since they're out of office, now all of a sudden they want to bring it up. But can you speak on um, how black people who uh, relocated to Libya during Gaddafi, how, how they were doing in Libya, and was slavery uh, common knowledge in Libya before NATO started bombing? Okay, yes, uh, I'll address that first. Okay. Uh, because whoever the somebody is, whoever said that uh, slavery was existing under Gaddafi and Gaddafi knew about it and Gaddafi was in some way, maybe perhaps involved in any way, that's totally not true. His name is Jason, now, his name is Jason Black. Uh, Jason Black, but well, go ahead. Okay. Uh, in 2010, in Libya, uh, people in Misrata, Libyans within Misrata, what they were doing, some of them were mistreating black immigrants in that area. And what Gaddafi did, Gaddafi cracked down on them and threw many of them in jail. What the French did, the French complained about that. Some of the European countries, they complained about Gaddafi punishing these individuals who had uh, who were mistreating black immigrants in the city of Misrata. Okay. So, so, so Mr. Black, who is saying this, he don't know what he's talking about. Well, he what said that, uh, and I know John Henry Clark was very critical of uh, uh, Gaddafi. So, but could, he never said, John Henry Clark, that Gaddafi was complicit in the slave trade. He pretty much just said that Gaddafi was an Arab and he was Arab supremacy, and that was about it. But but go ahead. But that's where he was trying to. to that's what he was trying to source. Yes. Well, just well, yes. Doctor Clark, he's passed on now. He's gone on now. And I generally I like to deal with people who are living. Right. But I'll say this about uh, Doctor Clark. Doctor Clark was very much anti-Arab. Okay. And and to some extent, that is no different than a pale-skinned person being anti-black simply because you're black, simply because of something that he was taught or he was told that blacks did to his people at some point in time. So uh, the painting, the broad painting of Arab people with a broad brush is no more acceptable to me is not acceptable to me because I don't want to be painted with that broad brush being a black man because we know that not all black men are the same. They're not the same. So Gaddafi, one of the things about Gaddafi, Gaddafi, uh, what, I, what I like to do is I, I really like to focus on what the man did. Go ahead. Go, you got to go ahead. Yeah, focus on what the man did because you're going to have the charlatans out there. You're going to have the liars out there who are going to say one thing, but they cannot back it up. They just, they're talk, they're a bunch of noise. But let's talk about the greatness of Libya under Gaddafi. You know, in, in the um, uh, late 1960s, Gaddafi overthrew the monarch in Libya. And the monarch was based in Benghazi. Right. He overthrew them and it was a bloodless coup. The monarch was out, side of Libya at that time. I believe he was over in Europe at the time. But at that time, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi overthrew that monarchy. Prior to overthrowing that monarchy, 
Libya was an extremely poor country, one of the poorest countries in Africa, extremely poor under the monarchy, under the colonialism of Britain. The Italians were involved there also. And I'm sure in some ways the French were probably involved in Libya at that time as well, but they were very, very poor. So when Gaddafi took over through a bloodless coup, similar to in some in some ways to what happened in Zimbabwe recently, it was a bloodless uh, coup where Mugabe uh, was forced to resign. So, but what Gaddafi did, Gaddafi made Libya the most prosperous nation in Africa. Now, someone can say, well, he was an Arab, T. West, he was an Arab. So the hell what? If I'm a black man and I do great things to help my people, who is anyone to attack me because I'm a black man, but yet I'm doing good? I'm helping these people. I'm helping my people. But not only did Gaddafi help his, his own people, Nelson Mandela spoke very highly of Muammar Gaddafi. He indicated that it was Muammar Gaddafi more than anyone who provided, who provided military aid, weapons, to fight against apartheid. Though, so I'm talking realities here. I'm talking facts. So the other thing also, under Gaddafi, black Libyans and also women had a wide range of freedoms in Libya. This was under Gaddafi. Under Gaddafi, Libya had no external debt, none, zero. In fact, Libya had a cash reserve of over $150 billion. Wow. Now, among, let's take uh, all the nations of the world, 163 countries, Libya ranked under Gaddafi, Libya ranked number 53 in the United Nations Human Development Index. Now, when you have uh, a ranking like that, that also means that your life expectancy is going to be high. So Libya had a life expectancy of 74 years. 74 years. Now, on average, that's higher than the age that most black men in America live to be. And this is an African country. Mm -hmm. So also in Libya, under Gaddafi, the adult literacy was at 88%. That's the adult literacy. So under Gaddafi, under Gaddafi, he constructed what some considers and have called the eighth wonder of the world, which was the largest irrigation project in the world, known as the Great Man-Made River, which turned arid deserts into lush farmlands, as well as towns and villages under Gaddafi. These are some of the things, the great things that Muammar Gaddafi did for Libya, but not only for Libya. What Gaddafi did, which Mr. Black is definitely not going to tell you, what Gaddafi did, Gaddafi paid $350 million for China to put into space the first African satellite. And Nigeria kicked in with $50 million. But now, again, I say, Gaddafi, Libya paid $350 million for that. So just some facts here. So the other thing also uh, with Gaddafi, Gaddafi was in the process of uh, creating one African currency right. based on gold based on gold. Now, you know there are lots of people who don't like that. They yeah. don't like that. And, and Europeans, Americans, they didn't like that. So these are just some of the good things, the great things that Muammar Gaddafi did. Now, uh, the other area that I think we need to get into, and, and, and before we do, you might want to stop and maybe have questions, but the next area that I want to talk about is who is responsible 
for what happened in Libya. Because Libya did not all of a sudden have blacks enslaved and, and markets selling blacks in Libya. That did not suddenly happen. So uh, we can go into those parts right now, unless, as I said, if you have some questions or comments, we'll yeah. go into that area next. No, let me ask you this. Uh, my brother, Yah Ankara Akan, he has a question, but it might, and you might answer this question as you get into who's responsible for the slavery. Um, he wants to know, uh, where did Hillary Clinton put all the gold and silver from Libya? Uh, now, you, you want to answer that now, or you want to wait until you... I'll say very quickly. She never got her hands on it. Okay. Okay? She never got her hands on, on that. Now, I, I will say this. Goldman Sachs, uh -huh. Goldman Sachs, they did steal over $1 billion of Libyan money. They did steal that. Now, when you, because you mentioned Hillary Clinton's name, a few months before they overthrew Libya, Hillary Clinton was in Washington, D.C. at the State Department publicly shaking hands with Muammar Gaddafi's son. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Knowing full well that she was planning on having them killed. Now, that's a low-down, dirty woman. Oh, we, okay. already, we, we already know that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Some of us, so I know you do, but some of us don't know that. No, well, this, okay. this is the thing, Mr. West. They do know it, but they choose to ignore it. They know she's not, she's not, she's no good. They know it. They just choose, our people just choose to ignore it. But go ahead. And, 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 and so what's sad about it is that that being the case with some of them, then that also calls into question those particular blacks, okay? So now the Goldman Sachs, they stole over a billion dollars from Libya. The Italians, they confiscated drugs that were intended for terrorists in Libya. So we're talking about who's responsible for this now. The Mossad, Israel, the Mossad had a spy who was caught in Libya and he was leading a 200 member ISIS terrorist group in Benghazi, and he disguised himself as an imam, as a preacher. His fake name was Abu Hafs, but his real name was Benjamin Ephraim. So this was a Mossad person in Libya. And then now on October, in October of 2016, as Obama was preparing to vacate the presidency, the Justice Department, led by our own Loretta Lynch, dropped illegal weapons charges against arms dealer Mark Turi, right. who threatened to reveal Hillary Clinton's role in providing the weapons to the terrorists. Now, this was right a month before the election that this happened. Now, Clinton had, Hillary Clinton had a big role in providing weapons to terrorists in Libya. Not only Libya though. Now part of his defense, talking about Turi, part of Turi's defense was that the arms to Libya were sanctioned by the US government. Now who was head of the State Department at that time? None other than Hillary Rodham Clinton. Now Tari also admitted that half of those weapons went to Libya and the other half went to Syria. Now, had there been a trial, had there been a trial, Hillary's private account, her email accounts, would have been used to prove that the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, that she knew about and was involved in these weapons transfers into Libya. Turi's trial was scheduled to start on election day. On election day in 2016, but it did not. Uh, they finally settled the, uh, 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 and decided not to have the trial. Now, so when we talk about Hillary Clinton, I mean, she's dirty, dirty, dirty as sin uh, uh, with all of this. Right. So now, other area also, using phony human rights as an excuse uh, to invade Libya. This was NATO. 
This was the United States, NATO. And I'm going to name some people. You have to name them because it is not good enough for people in London, for people here in the United States of America and other countries of the world to just get out in the streets and protest about the enslavement of black people in Libya. That's not good enough because they will continually do this again if you don't make and call to account those who were responsible you have to name them now in the united nations you had Ban Ki moon who was the secretary general of the united nations at the time yeah you, that's he's a leader. Of korea right korean correct that's right uh -huh. you had resolution south korean you had resolution 1973 of the united nations in that resolution that gave no the right to go in and do what they were doing in Libya. And some even questioned that they even had that right to even do that. So, and then also there was a weapons embargo against Libya, but yet you had Hillary Clinton through the State Department who was funneling weapons into Libya, into the hands of terrorists with the purpose of overthrowing the government of Libya, and also funneling weapons into Syria with the same purpose of overthrowing the government of Syria. This is illegal activity. These are activities that got people executed following World War II for war crimes. Now, so you had people who were involved in all of this, who were pushing and promoting this, and they knowingly knew that they were lying, including mainstream media. Now, I already mentioned the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, but you also had French president, Nicolas Sarkozy. He was one of the major driving forces behind this. And in fact, the French bombing, the French bomb uh, uh, bombers, their, their jets, were the first ones to start bombing Libya, leading the NATO fleet in Libya. That's where uh, Obama's opposition on Fox News, that's where they came up with the term, Obama is leading from behind, because France was out front first in bombing Libya. But not only was Hillary Clinton uh, illegally helping to facilitate the movement of weapons into Libya, but also Nicolas Sarkozy, France, was also airdropping weapons into Syria mm -hmm. and, uh, excuse me, into Libya. They were airdropping those weapons and it was illegal. They were never held account. Most people are not going to talk about this. They're going to march and, and, and get sweaty, get tired, and then go home and sit down, but they're not going to deal with what came before, what caused this. What triggered this? What was the catalyst that brought this about? There are people who are guilty, and more names. Bernard Henry Levy, a Frenchman. He's another one who promoted this. He's another one who must be held to account. Hillary Clinton, I mentioned her. She must be held to account. And it's good she did not win. I promised in 2011 that I would do all that I could to make sure that Hillary Clinton never sat as president of the United States. Another one was John McCain. Go ahead. But you know, sorry to cut you off, that there are a lot of black people that will call you a coon for yes. doing that. Yes, yes. Now, now to those, and I'm talking, I'm talking to any of you who's, who's, who's coming out with that term right now. I'm just going to tell you just like it is. You're dumb, you're stupid, you're idiots. Because I'll ask you this question. Where did the term coon come from? Where did it come from? You people who use that term, you are the children of blacks who were enslaved by pale-skinned people in America, and those pale-skinned people refer to your ancestors as coons. Now, you're using the term that they put in your head to attack your brothers and your sisters. So it's real stupid. You're stupid to use the term. So, so on my channel, on, on, on YouTube, I flag for that. Anyone who come out and use the term coon, their comments are automatically blocked because that is stupid. It's just idiocy that uh, blacks would use that term and not even know what the origins were and not know what the origins uh, 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 were and are of that. So, but other people who were responsible, naming them, 
They must be named oh, so yeah. that they are held accountable. Otherwise, history repeats itself. Who were the other ones? Barack Hussein Obama was another one. David Cameron of Britain was another one. Theresa May, who is now the prime minister, she was another one because in parliament, she voted for what happened in Libya. And of Africa, the leaders of Nigeria, they're responsible. The leaders of South Africa, they're responsible. The leaders of Gabon, they're responsible because they voted in the affirmative for resolution 1973, which brought about what we saw in Libya. They voted for it. So they're responsible for it. Other names, also Mohammed Mercy, he's in prison now in Egypt, but he's also responsible, him being a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, because when he was in power in Egypt before uh, uh, Sisi took over, he was helping to funnel weapons across the Egyptian border into, e into Libya. And that's also where uh, Christopher Stevens, the ambassador at that time was involved. Mm -hmm. He was killed in Libya and he deserved to die. And I say he deserved to die because anyone who murder and bring about the murder and the death of hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people, they also deserve what they bring up on others. Christopher Stevens got what he deserved in Libya. He was helping to funnel weapons into Libya and then from Libya into Syria because Gaddafi had a huge arsenal of weapons and right. they wanted to use some of those weapons to overthrow the legitimate government of Syria that now Russia Russia came in a little over two years ago and they helped Syria to defeat the terrorists who were funded by the United States, by Israel, by Britain, by France, by Arab countries such as Saudi Arabia and Qatar and others, United Arab Emirates, they were, they were funding them and providing them with weapons in Syria to fight against and to overthrow the Syrian government. Now, also, quick question: Was uh, Su was Susan Rice involved? Of course, Susan Rice was involved. She was lying. She was out lying. She was telling lies like the rest of them were doing. She was head of uh, NSA. She was lying as well. Susan Rice, yes, she, she she's guilty. Susan Rice, but also Turkey at that time. Turkey was also involved because many of the terrorists, if you want to talk about Syria, many of the terrorists would come through from European countries, mainly France, they would come through Turkey to get into Syria. And then some of, the, some of these terrorists went on from Syria and went into Libya to help overthrow the government of uh, Muammar Gaddafi. So also you had some of the mullahs in Iran. Some of these mullahs in Iran, they were still stuck on this uh, imam who had came up missing a few decades ago in Libya, and they blamed it on Gaddafi. Okay, so you had a few mullahs who were helping to push and promote that this what happened in Libya, and then also, as I said, you got Saudi Arabia, you got Qatar, these Arab states, you got United Arab Emirates, you got Bahrain, you got Jordan. All of these countries were a coalition against the richest. African country, an African country that was working to help build the continent of Africa, an African country that, that Nelson Mandela spoke very highly of, that Muammar Gaddafi did not just talk. He did not talk about uh, just getting rid of uh, colonialism. He acted. He put his money where his mouth was. That was Muammar Gaddafi. And now Hillary Clinton. Now, about 47 BC, Roman Emperor Julius Caesar, he stated in a letter to the Roman Senate, I came, I saw, I conquered. Now, that lying, conniving, crooked Hillary Clinton in 2011, after the savage murder publicly of Muammar Gaddafi and his son was also murdered after the son that Hillary Clinton had just met with a few months ago. That's a cold-blooded woman, okay? Mm -hmm. But savagely murdered in public, Hillary Clinton claimed and said and stated, we came, we saw, and he died. 
That was Hillary Clinton. That's what she was. That's not someone that any black person, talking to all you black sisters out there too, who still embrace that, that, that lying Hillary Clinton, that's not someone that you should be embracing. I, I'm with her. I'm with her. That, that, that's what they were saying. I'm with her. That's right. That's right. And, and, and the thing is, is that you have to ask the question, why is the state of black America progressively doing this, going down? You have to point at these black leaders, these black voices. You have to point at that. Listen, Mr. West, I'm in Atlanta. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. I said black leaders, the black church, and HBCUs have failed the black community. You want to know the backlash I got for saying that? From just black people in general, how they just, no, that's not true. Why would you say such a thing? You know, black people who graduated from HBCUs, oh, you're crazy. Why, why is that? Well, we know these institutions have not uh, operated in the best interest of the black collective, especially black politicians. I'll give you a prime example, but I'll give you the platform. I'm in Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta was this close to having a white mayor, Mary Norwood. Now, when Obama was in office, I said black people need to hold Obama accountable because Obama's not doing anything for black people. You want to know what black people said? That Obama's not the president of black people. He's everybody's president. Now, when uh, Mary Norrell was about to win, but she lost, black people had a list of demands that they wanted. Hey, son. Say oh, my mother. Say, say hello to everybody, man. Sir. Hello. Oh, beautiful. Hello there, little man. Hello. Oh, I'll... Go close the door. Go close the door. I want some water. I'll go get you some water. Give me a second. Let me just ask this question. I'll get you some water, okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah, but uh, oh, here, here, Master, here, here. Take a little. Okay. 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 Close the door. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So um, so Mary knew it was one, and so the um, what people were saying was that okay. Mary Noah was disconnected from black people, that she was not going to operate in the best interest of black people, that she supported the police, uh, and then that Keisha Lance Bottoms, the black candidate who won, that she was going to get jobs and, get, and stop gentrification, affordable housing. You want to know what she just did today and said that she was going to make priority? What? That was uh, building the police force. <laughs> okay that today and, and i'm just telling black people like why are you surprised like if you look in la the bay area uh seattle atlanta these black liberal democratic cities i'm not a liberal i'm not a democrat i'm not a republican but i just see black people in these in these these new york la doing bad but they continue to still support these leaders I need to open it. I'm opening right here. Before. I'm going to close the door. I, I just had to say that, but go go ahead, Mr. West. I know I got off on a tangent, but yeah, but go ahead. Just not, not calling out leadership, but they still refuse to call out black leadership. That's the point I want to make. Yes, and, and, and that's good. You have to call them out. You have to make them accountable. Otherwise, they become, and they are, most of them, complacent. Now, uh, of course, not all of them are, are are like that. But if they're in power long enough, generally and almost always, they become that way. Now, Cynthia McKinney, she didn't last in there too long. Right, but Cynthia, but Cynthia, Cynthia McKinney kept it real. I love that's, Cynthia McKinney. That's right. That's why she didn't last too long. Okay? So, so what you have is you have to make them accountable. So these people who I named, they must be made accountable for what is happening in Libya. Mm -hmm. That was a war crime that was committed there by NATO. NATO is not for Africa. NATO was supposed to be for European defense. But there it, there it was, right there in Africa, with the blessings of some 
a few of the key African states, with the African Union mostly silent about it, mostly. Okay, so uh, we have to call to account. Now the solution is to call to account. If you're going to march, the main thing that you should have as a part of your platform is what I just stated. You have to name these people. You have to say it to the world that these are the people who were, were responsible and are responsible for what is happening in Libya today. Now, they tried to do the same thing in Syria, but Vladimir Putin put a stop to it. Now, Putin indicated that had he been president at the time when Russia voted to abstain on the UN Security Council relative to Libya, that would not have happened to Libya under Putin. He was prime minister at the time. He wasn't president. Right. Medvedev was, was president at that time. So um, things can change in Libya mm -hmm. toward the positive. But the only way it's going to change is by way of what I just stated. You have a city in Libya. The name is Tuorga. Mm -hmm. I did reports on that in 2011. You see in the reports that I did, did of that, you see those cities, that city being bombed by NATO, men, women, and children. You see them injured. You see some of them dying in the hospital. These are blacks. Tawarga was a black city in Libya, a city of 60,000 Libyans, black Libyans. And the people from Misrata, that group, came into Tawarga after NATO had completed its bombing, they came in and they cleaned out the rest of the people in that city and they declared that that city would never again be occupied in Libya, ever. Gaddafi didn't do that. These were people aided by the same group of people, the same descendants of people who enslaved blacks, the same group of people who used apartheid microbiology to study human anatomy using uh, painful techniques upon black men and black women here in the United States of America. They haven't changed. In general, when you talk about the higher echelon of power, they have not changed. And now yet you see they're threatening North Korea. Mm -hmm saying, well, North Korea, you don't have a right to own nuclear weapons. Well, when Muammar Gaddafi got rid of his uh, weapons, his chemical weapons, or he ended his study on uh, producing uh, nuclear weapons, when he got rid of that, they embraced him. They brought him in into their, their, their uh, arms. And then look at what the snake did. They then turned on him and savagely murdered him. Not only murdered him, but they murdered members of his family. They have not changed. So we have to look at that and we have to say marching is not good enough. You have to do more than march. You have to do more than just scream without a plan of action. And that plan of action is to name them and after you name them make them accountable obama talked about his legacy well guess what as a black man i don't give a damn about obama's legacy you're hey, hey, guess what you're you're a coon you're a coon, you're a coon. that's right and we all we know where that word came from too all right okay all right i don't give a damn about his legacy during his administration especially and i said this in 2011 I said, if black people in America do not cry out for what's happening in Libya, and specifically also what's happening to black people in Libya in 2011, it's 2017 now, but this was 2011, I said that watch, mark my words, you're going to have a huge increase in the killing of blacks in the streets of America by cops. And you saw exactly that happen under Barack Obama right. because they knew that if, if they could use Barack Obama to promote the homosexual agenda in Africa, 
Even right. at Nelson Mandela's funeral, he got up there talking about homosexuality. Okay, okay, yeah. and, and 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 if he can promote that, and then if he can use America's military might and join with the NATO allies to destroy the most prosperous African nation, Libya, then. He really don't give a damn about black folks in the streets of America. Now, black folks, black folks were just uh, bamboozled and hoodwinked with that. And and now, you know, of course, now you have Donald Trump, okay? But you haven't seen yet Donald Trump uh, colluding with terrorists to do what George Bush did and then what Obama did. You haven't really seen that yet. Now that was something that that Trump even talked about when he was campaigning. He talked a little bit about how the United States was uh, was colluding with terrorists to overthrow these sovereign governments, to bring regime change to those governments. And he indicated he would not be in the business of this whole regime change thing. And I hope I hope he holds true to that. There's a lot of pressure for him to not hold true to it. But I hope he does. Now, in order to do that, that means you're going to have to go up against the CIA and even to some extent the FBI. Thing that happened where he's going up against these institutions that are corrupt, very corrupt. But anyway, I'll stop right there. Maybe you have some questions. Maybe your audience have some questions. We got the uh, question in the chat room. But brother, this has probably been the most detailed or, or informative, uh, I mean, session I've ever heard on what's really going on in uh, Libya. I know Louis Farrakhan spoke on it. it it's weird because Louis Farrakhan, he spoke on it, uh, I guess, during the invasion and when Gaddafi was removed. But you haven't really heard from him since, and really speaking on the slavery that's going on, which is, which is kind of odd, you know. In fact, you haven't really heard from a lot of, because you got to understand, there are a lot of black Muslims who are being traded as slaves. And of course, you know, the Arabs in Libya right now that are participating in the slave, that are, are trading the slaves, are Muslim as well. But you don't hear a lot of black Muslim groups right now really speaking out about it. Do you, do, is there a reason why do you think? Uh, well, well, I think it's obvious they're embarrassed. Okay, they're embarrassed that you have some people who are running under the banner of being Muslims, of being Islamic, but yet they are hypocrites and liars because they're not only enslaving these people, they're beating them. Mm -hmm. They're putting some of them through electric shock. They're raping some of them. They're doing these things. Organ, organ harvesting. Oh, of course, they're doing that. And, and ground zero for organ harvesting is Israel. Right. As I said earlier in, the, in your program, you had a Mossad, a member of the Mossad, who was right there in Libya, mm -hmm. working with and leading terrorists in Libya. So, so you can't divide. And even, even with Syria, when some of these terrorists would get injured over in Syria, Israelis would medically treat them. So they were helping them, not only helping them in that way, they were also providing them with some of the weaponry for the purpose of overthrowing the Syrian government. They did not succeed in Syria as they had succeeded to do in Libya. And I'm thankful for that. And that is mostly due to Vladimir Putin becoming involved. That's why they're going after Russia so hard. That's why every every chance they get, they're attacking Russia. They want to blame everything on Russia. You would think that Russia is a black man because they're blaming everything on Russia. They're blaming it on Putin. Okay? Mm -hmm. A few years ago, uh, Vladimir Putin declared that NGOs operating in Russia have to declare as foreign agents because many of those NGOs, what they were doing, they were promoting other things there, such as the homo, uh, even the homosexual agenda in Russia. And Putin basically said, no, 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 no. We don't have that here. We're not going to tolerate that here. So even with the Olympics, you have the whole, where in Sochi, 
the American politicians boycotted the Olymp the Winter Olympics in Sochi. And at the same time, the Obama administration was plotting that coup in Ukraine. Right. And that's when Crimea voted. They had a referendum. They voted. The people voted that they wanted to secede and return back to Russia, which in the 1950s, Crimea was a part of Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, and then, so the United States and other Western European countries, they came out with sanctions against Russia based on that. Okay. So then now, the most latest, they're attacking the Russian athletes of Sochi, claiming that, oh, well, uh, they won all those gold medals because uh, they were doping. Well, you know, they, they, they banned Russia from, I guess, the next Olympics. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's how. <clears throat> That's how nasty and pitiful some of these descendants are of the same group of people who had no problem raping and enslaving black men and women and boys and girls here in the Western Hemisphere. They haven't changed. They're the same. And when they get a chance, they'll raise that ugly head and you'll see it. So they have not changed. And, and that is not, of course, I'm not saying, those who know me, I'm not saying that all pale-skinned people are bad people. No, I would never say that. And I definitely don't say that all black people are good, great people who I want to take into my bosom. Oh, no, I, I would never say that. You look at people on individual basis, you judge them based upon, based upon their individual characteristics, on their character. That's the way that I look at it, brother Amir. So, so what's what's next? Like, what? I mean, let me ask you this: African Union. Why do you think the African Union did not send troops to Libya? Now, the excuse I heard was since Gaddafi was a dictator, uh, that I guess you have the right to forcefully remove a dictator. But what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? After what the Gaddafi has done for Africa, and I want to say Gaddafi started or funded the African Union. Why do you think that the African Union did not get involved in Libya? Uh, you had some African leaders who are envious. Who, they were envious. They were jealous because they know, they know that Gaddafi did for the Libyan people what many of them should have done for the people in their countries. They Fact. know that. Fact. And, yeah. and secondly, they were cowards. Uh, they, they are so dependent on Western aid, Western arms, weapons, etc., that they know that if they were to go into Libya in defiance of NATO, that they themselves would be bombed. Now you had you had uh, Jacob Zuma and and a few others, a delegation that went to Libya twice, uh, leading up to and and I think maybe at one one time even after NATO had started bombing, but I th most of it was if not all was before NATO started bombing, and they wanted to meet with Muammar Gaddafi, mm -hmm. but. They were also very cognizant of the fact that NATO could drop a bomb on them. They knew that. So mm -hmm. uh, coward, cowardice is another part of it. And uh, some of them, they were paid off. Nigeria, in return for that, what they got right after that vote in the United Nations Security Council, they got an old um, uh, Coast Guard ship from the United States that the United States had retrofitted into a warship for Nigeria. So, 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 so they sold out just like some of the chiefs, not all of them, but some of them willingly sold out your ancestors for hundreds of years ago in, in, in part to West Africa. Okay. Now the other thing also is this, is you have, you have, um, Nigeria. Nigeria has what's called sweet crude oil. That's the best crude oil in the world. Libya, Libya also has sweet crude oil. 
So Nigeria, the way Nigeria's many of their leaders think, I mean, a lot of them are very conniving now. They they can be smooth and conniving. Uh, the way some of them are thinking, well, hey, look, if we knock Libya, help to get Libya knocked out of the equation for a while, that means that we can make more money on the on the oil market selling our sweet crude oil because Libya's cr sweet crude is, won't be available for a while. So you have that sort of thinking, uh, unfortunately, by some of the Nigerian leadership. Uh, so Gabon was another one. And then, of course, as I said, South Africa was another one. And South Africa, that was under Jacob Zuma. So shame on those leaders. Shame on them for what they help uh, Europeans and Arab countries do to Libya. And you have to ask the question, is Libya better off today than it was in 2010? And the answer would be, hell no. It's not better off. So, um, so, so uh, again, I, and I'm going to just reiterate this again. Solutions. Mm -hmm. The only way you solve this is you have to call to account those who are responsible for this in Libya. You must do that. You must do it because they did it, and some of them are still operating and trying to profiteer in Libya today. Uh, man, I just, you know, when people uh, in the chat room, I mean, their response is great. They're just, they're loving information because, I mean, you're not going to get this on just regular OTVR via the regular media. With that being said, I know this is kind of off topic. Brother Wes, you notice that black media, mainstream media is pretty much dead. Like, especially now, since Tavis Smiley's pretty much gone. Uh, your boy Roland Martin, he got his show canceled. Uh, I mean, like, we're, we're, the, we're black media now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, and I indicated that quite some time ago that, um, <clears throat> that you would have. See, what you have is this. Out, out in the social media world, one of the things that the internet brought was millions and millions, hundreds of millions of eyes and ears. Mainstream media as you know it today is forever being changed. Um, mainstream media, even in the US presidential election, the last one, mm -hmm. mainstream media was challenged to its core. Virtually all of them thought that Hillary Clinton had, had it in the bag, that she, had, that she was going to win it. But yet, there were some of us, I being one, who indicated in August of 2015 that Donald Trump was going to become the next president of the United States. And I also indicated why he was going to become the next president of the United States. So this is the media now. It is. It, it's it, it's a it, it's a it's a complete sea change. It's a paradigm change, and mainstream media they're hearing footsteps in the dark. That's what's happening. That is why mainstream media started attacking Facebook. They started attacking YouTube. They started attacking Russia Today, and others. They started attacking the up and coming. And not just coming, but we are here. We're here now. Because I may be one, and I may have I may have 25,000 subscribers, and thousands of them listen to the programs very often. But it's not just me. There are thousands of others similar to me who are out there, yourself being one. That all of that is taking the place of mainstream media. Mm -hmm. So that's the new norm, and it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Okay. Uh, Ashley Denise, you have a question. Go ahead. Uh, 
Let, let me add, it's, it's a little off topic, uh, Brother Wes. I don't, um, but we have a question in the chat room. Uh, do you mind answering a question that's off topic? Oh, you know what? Did you, did you hear me, Brother Wes? Yes, go ahead. I was gonna ask, do you, do, do you have an issue with- um, Answer the question? That's out, off topic, that has to do with uh that's okay. that's okay we've covered the main the main part of this program so so we can we can finish up the rest of it with entertaining some questions that you your viewers have okay all right so uh how do you feel about black people being so quick to call out amorosa but love hillary clinton they're idiots <laughs> plain and simple. Uh -huh. they're idiots uh, just plain and simple i mean i could break it down but I don't. I don't even need to go into that because that's a whole program to itself. Right. I could break it down and prove it that they're idiots. Just prove it. Okay. Right. I mean, Hillary Clinton's got a got a a a, a, a black stepson in Arkansas. Do you think? Do you think that story's true? They're saying there's a DNA oh, test. Done. Oh yes, it's true. Oh yes. I have no doubt about it. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but that's that's Bill's son. All right, so so Hillary Hillary is 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 basically no good. She's she's a slickster, and she feels that she she's privileged and she can get what she wants. Mm -hmm. But she didn't get the presidency, and I swore that she would never win the presidency. Okay, let me ask you: What's the AU actually doing about Africans being enslaved today? Because you got to understand, it's going on in Mauritania too. As far as Africans being enslaved, what do you think the AU is doing, if anything? Well, else? well, some of those countries within the African Union, some of them are trying to get their people out of Libya. Some of them have been successful in doing that. Uh, some of them, they removed some of them uh, back to Nigeria. But more importantly, because you have to look at that's just a temporary band aid. Okay, let's look at real solutions. You have to ask the question. Why are these people fleeing from their various countries and then uh, 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 putting their lives and their children's lives in danger, uh, going through the Saharan desert up through Libya, and then trying to get on those rinky dink boats to try to cross the Mediterranean to get into Europe? Why right. are they doing all of this? All right, right now, for many, many years, I've said that Africa is the richest continent on the face of the earth. Everybody knows that except for most black folks. Now, what has to happen is that African people need to and must maximize that wealth, the wealth of that continent. Much of what we're doing right now, we could not do it if we did not get certain resources from Africa. What we're doing right now, or how we're interacting right now, with what what some of this these computer parts and all are made of, it comes from Africa. Um, let me show you something just for a moment here. I'm going to get something. Just excuse me, just a moment. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Everybody in the chat room, thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, Brother T West is just dropping uh, jewels uh, tonight. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to his page, Afri Synergy. I'm going to put the link in the uh, in the chat room. Make sure you guys subscribe. Now, you see this? Yes. This is a drone. Yes. Okay, it's a drone. And it's very light. Okay, it has a battery that goes in here. That gives it a little bit more weight. Now, and it has a camera down here and the whole bit and all. All right, now this drone, this material on here, is very lightweight. It's very strong, but lightweight. What is it made from? Uh, manganese. manganese is a part of this manganese is one of the four most strategic metals in the world okay the four most strategic metals in the world now i know you all don't learn this in school all right but school's in right now i've been teaching this for many many years chromium cobalt manganese and platinum those are the four most strategic metals in the world. Mm -hmm. and most of that you get from the continent of Africa. Strategic metals, that means metals that go into aero, uh, 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 airplanes and, and other uh, flying vehicles, 
rockets, etc. These are the things that you must teach your children right now. You start them at an early age teaching them these things. This is technology. These are the things that are going to drive you forward in the future and your children and your children's children. This is a part of what Afro Synergy News is all about. You're not going to, as I said, you're not going to learn this in most schools. You know, you, these things you probably learn when you get off to places like MIT and all. Right. But hey, right here on the internet, you can learn almost everything that they're teaching at MIT. You can learn it right here. If you're, if you're really, really diligent about it and you know how to use search engines and you know how to use keywords, you can learn so much right here. So, but anyway, uh uh african countries uh the continent is a very rich continent they have to optimize that wealth i mean france it was uh jacques uh Chirac, uh former leader of france who once said that france is a poor country but without africa he said without at these without the francophone countries these african countries france would be a very poor country okay that's a fact. Right, well, that's that's a reality. All of Europe would be. You understand, before Europe uh, colonialized Africa, they were in their dark ages. That's right. That's right. I mean, what they did uh, hundreds of years ago, they brought bi black builders, black uh, farmers, uh, and artisans over here. They already had the skills. Mm -hmm. They brought them here to build the Americas. Right. Not just the United States, but blacks were all down in Brazil, all down in other South American countries, in Central America, even in Mexico. They were all down in all those areas. Because the Spanish, they were the first ones to, and the Portuguese, they were the first to really exploit black labor like that and enslave black people. They were the first to do that. Right. So, so, so uh, 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 that's a key point that we have to realize. So. Uh, we can do better but we have to think intelligently we have to have a plan so any other questions yeah and and, and, and uh this could be the last question brother uh Brittany wants to know is it possible um uh, for black people in america to be put back into slavery no okay go ahead go ahead and go in on that because a lot of black people were saying and it's funny because because of policies or because of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton's involvement in NATO and in taking out Gaddafi, black people are now back in slavery. But no. the black people who supported Obama and Clinton will tell you that Donald Trump is going to put black people back into slavery. That, that's very telling. Uh, no, those are charlatans. Those are idiots. Uh -huh. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Those are idiots. Those are people who use this um, ignorance and fear with the purpose of, of uh, trying to um, uh, bring you over into their corner, over into their way of thinking. It will never, ever happen. The closest you get to that are people who go into prisons, and a huge percentage of them are black men. And the black women are also increasing in great number also. But you also have people of other ethnicities in there as well. But that's the closest thing you're going to get to slavery. 